Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about AWS Beanstalk. Before I start my tutorial, I'm a blogger and I write my blog at techieandtravel.com. Do check it out. Also, if you like my YouTube contents, do like, share, subscribe and comment on it. So today we are talking about AWS Beanstalk, which is related to the application deployment. So let's talk about the basic way to deploy an application in AWS. You create your VPC, you create public subnet and private subnet. You create your EC2 instance in the public subnet and you configure it to be a web server based on your choice. And then on the private subnet, you configure the database and then you configure the DNS in route 53 to point to the web server and any user from the internet then can hit the web server. Now, as your application gets more attention, there are more traffic coming into your environment. Then you manually spin up multiple web server. And then to handle the traffic, you create a elastic load balancing that balances the traffic across the multiple web server. And then to scale the capacity, you configure auto scaling group and have your web server in that auto scaling group. So all these stuff you have to do manually in order to host a simple application in the AWS. But just think about this. What if you don't have to do any of this backend infrastructure management? And what if you just create your AWS account and you use a service called AWS Beanstalk? You can log in through the internet using your IAM user and credentials. You just upload your code just the application part into the Beanstalk and Beanstalk handles the rest of auto scaling, the backend EC2 instances. It handles the underlying database as well as the load balancing between your EC2 instances. So AWS Beanstalk is a service that does all the underlying infrastructure management for you and you can just focus on the code. So AWS Elastic Beanstalk provides developers and system administrators an easy and fast way to deploy and manage the applications without having to worry about the infrastructure. We are theoretically running all our compute services on EC2, but this provisioning and handling, these are done by AWS. So you can just focus on your code and your business logic. Now you can solely focus on the application code. This makes the deployment process faster and simpler. At the same time, you regain full control over the AWS resources powering your application and you can access these underlying resources anytime. You have freedom to select the AWS resources such as instance type, the processor type to run the workload on, etc. And then there is no additional charge for the Elastic Beanstalk service. You only pay for the resources you use to run your application like storage in Amazon S3. Also, the cost can vary with the number of EC2 instance, the size of bucket and configuration of the backend database instances. So what platform does it support? The supported application platforms are Java, .NET, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, and Docker. Good thing is that if you are not using any of these above programming languages, but still want to use the Elastic Beanstalk service, you can still configure your Docker container with whatever framework you want to leverage, and you could still find a way to support it on EVS. But obviously that comes with a little bit of extra work. So why use EVS or what are the EVS features? First, it's so fast and simple to begin. It's the fastest way to deploy your application on AWS. You simply use your AWS management console. You can use Git repository where your application code resides or an IDE like Eclipse, Visual Code Studio to upload your application and then EVS automatically handles the deployment details. Within minutes, your application will be ready to use without any infrastructure configuration. It provides you with reduced overall maintenance as you are not focusing on the in underlying infrastructure. Another important feature is its scalability. We can be sure that as the demand keeps on increasing, we can trust the Beanstalk service to be automatically able to handle and scale the backend infrastructure. Another feature is that it has integrated monitoring. So it includes all the monitoring features for the resources that it deploys in the backend. And another important feature is its customization. With Beanstalk, you have the freedom to select the AWS resources, such as the EC2 instance type, including the spot instances that are optimal for your application. You also retain full control over the AWS resources that are powering your application. So if you decide that you want to take some or all of the elements of your infrastructure, you can do so seamlessly by by using the Beanstalk's management capabilities. There are a lot of popular companies like BMW, Zillow, Geonet that leverages the AWS 
Elastic Beanstalk. So you just create your application uh, in any programming language that AWS supports. You upload the version of it in AWS. You launch your environment and boom, there you have your application in AWS. Now let's talk about the Beanstalk component. The first one is application. Application has all deployable code, including the environments, version, its environment configurations, etc. So when we want to deploy an application, generally we create a folder and we place all the supported application components in it. So application in Beanstalk can be thought of as a folder. The next one is application version. For example, you deployed your code and it's running, but now you want to make some change in the code. You go ahead and make the change and launch it in Elastic Beanstalk. You have two versions of the code now. In Beanstalk, application version refers to that specific leveled iteration of the deployable code for a web application. They are stored in Amazon S3 bucket and the application version points to the S3 bucket that contains the deployable code such as we are used to Java WAR WAR file. The application version is part of an application and application can have many application versions and each application version is unique. Next is environment. Environment is where you place or launch your application and it's the heart of the application. When you launch your application in Beanstalk, AWS starts assigning the resources like EC2, auto scaling groups, load balancer or security group to your application. So all these AWS resources that are used for running an application version are collectively known as environment. In environment, only current version of the application runs. But remember, one application version can run in only one environment, but the same application version can be deployed across other multiple environment. For example, if you have a web application dev and you have web application staging, both has to be deployed in the different environment. You have to have different resources to run another version. Next, we have environment tier. The first step in launching the Elastic Beanstalk environment is selecting the environment tier. So the environment tier is responsible for designating the application's type that will be running the environment. That is, environment tier determines whether Elastic Beanstalk provisions the resources to support web application that handles the HTTP requests or that handles the background uh, jobs. It also decides which resources will be provisioned by the Beanstalk for supporting the environment based on the application type. So when launching an Elastic Beanstalk environment for the first time, Beanstalk will ask you to choose between these two environment tiers. Depending on whether your need is to support a web application that handles the HTTP or HTTPS request, you choose either web server environment or if your application needs to handle the background processing tasks, you choose the worker environment tier. So web server environment is the client facing front end piece. Every environment has a URL when you launch an application and it's CNAME that points to the load balancer. Web server handles the HTTP request from clients. That's why we use web server environment for web server application or any applications which works on the HTTP or HTTP requests. Worker environment is the backend application. That is, it facilitates the backend tasks or backend jobs. It runs micro apps or it supports the application run. So let's see the complete web server environment in brief. These overall resources that facilitates a working application are called environment. So AWS resources created for a web server environment here includes the elastic load balancer, auto scaling group, one or more EC2 instances. So in web server environment, when a application receives the client requests, Amazon Route 53 sends this request to the Elastic Load Balancer. And Route 53 is a global service for DNS. And the Load Balancer now shares the request among the EC2 instances. The Load Balancer shares requests using the predefined algorithm where equal distribution of load is distributed among the EC2 instances. Within the environment, AWS Beanstalk will create minimum number of EC2 instance to run your application. So each EC2 instance are part of the security group that acts as a firewall to these EC2 instances. And by default, it will allow port 80 for the application. Elastic Load Balancer also integrates with auto scaling. So for every environment, you will have a auto scaling group that will manage the capacity planning for your application based on the load that you receive. EC2 instance run software stack. This software stack is dependent on the container type that means Elastic Beanstalk environment with the Apache Tomcat container, it uses Amazon Linux operating system. Each EC2 instance runs an important software component called Host Manager. This is one of the most important part of the web server environment. This Host Manager is responsible for deploying application, generating instance level events, aggregating the events and metrics for retrieval through either the AWS Management Console or Command Line 
or through the API. And it also takes care of patching the instance components. So these EC2 instances are again connected to the backend database. All these features are available in Elastic Beanstalk dashboard itself. So whenever you create a web server environment with Elastic Beanstalk, then this tier includes an Elastic Load Balancer, Auto Scaling Group, one or more EC2 instances, and the backend databases. So now let's look into the worker environment. Worker environment is slightly different and are used by applications that have backend processing tasks. So let's take this scenario where a client makes some request to the web server. These are still part of the web server environment here. So what if the client request is a time consuming and processor intensive task. If client makes another request in the meantime, the web server won't be able to process that request. So it declines that request. That's where the worker environment comes in. So in worker environment, it will interact with the Amazon queuing service called SQS. When you launch an application in worker environment, Beanstalk will create SQS queue as part of the worker environment. Elastic Beanstalk worker environment supports the SQS dead letter queues which can be used to store messages that could not be successfully processed. So dead letter queue, it provides the ability to sideline, isolate, and analyze the unsuccessfully processed messages. And the SQS queue pass this request on the back end to the worker. With the worker tier, there is a daemon installed on the EC2 instance on the back end. And this daemon is responsible for pulling this request from the queue and then sending the data back to the web application running in the worker environment tier. As a result, Beanstalk handles all the tasks and responds with the HTTP response. So SQS saves the message via post request to the HTTP path of the worker environment and worker environment executes the task given by the SQS and responds with the HTTP response after the operation is complete. So this is how two applications communicate. So with this worker environment, we are eliminating the resource intensive task processing and time taken by front end web server and handling it in the back end. That's how worker environment comes into play to resolve the backend application tasks. This is a complete picture of web server environment tier and worker environment tier. So the AWS resources created for a web server environment tier includes the load balancer, auto scaling group, one or more EC2 instances, security group. And the AWS resources created for a worker environment tier includes an auto scaling group, one or more EC2 instances, and an IAM role that allows permission to read these messages from the SQS queue. And the other major difference is that EC2 instance in an web server environment tier has that important software component called host manager that is responsible for managing all the tasks. Whereas in EC2 instances that is in a worker environment tier, it has this component called daemon that is responsible for pulling the messages from the queue. So it's clear that these two tiers are different and it's likely that we have to use these two tiers in conjunction with each other. So now that we have clear understanding of the AWS Beanstalk, its components, its supported languages, and its environment tiers, now let's look into the demo. Here I'm in my AWS management console. Before we start deploying our application in Elastic Beanstalk, I'd like to point you to these tutorials and sample page that AWS provides. Here, you can download the sample applications if you don't have your own application. You can download these sample applications in any of the supported platforms that AWS provides. If you have your own application, then you can head back into the management console. If you have been stuck in the recently visited services, you can click on it or in the search section, you can type Beanstalk and click on Elastic Beanstalk. Now I'm in the home page of Elastic Beanstalk. Over here, I'll choose create application and then provide a sample name Techie app. And then I'll scroll down under the platform section. You can choose a platform in any of the languages that your application is written in. For this purpose, I'll choose Node.js. And if you want to upload your own code, you can click on upload code and choose a file. But for the testing purpose, I'll choose the sample application that AWS provides and then click on configure more options. For this tutorial, you wouldn't need to configure any of the custom environment because AWS will automatically create an environment for you because you are leveraging the sample application that AWS provided. But I want to show you that you have the option to choose the different configuration options for your environment. I'll choose and create app. Now you see AWS goes through the process of creating your environment. As we discussed earlier, environment are the 
total AWS resources that your application leverages. So you can see in this console, AWS is going through the process of creating the environment for your application. Within few minutes, you will see that your environment and your sample application is launched. You can monitor the progress in the console section. As you see, your environment is created. AWS provided the URL for accessing your sample application. Let's click on it. You can see that the sample application that you deployed in AWS Beanstalk is successful. Now let me head back to the dashboard. On the left, you can see various options available where you can click on monitoring and monitor the health of your environment. Here, since we chose the sample application provided by Amazon, it chose the environment for us. But as discussed earlier, you can click on the environment and create your custom environment. And as we studied earlier, Amazon provides two different tier environment for us, web server environment tier and worker environment tier. You can click on select and you can configure the environment as per your need. And then upload the code if it's present in your local directories or in the S3 bucket. I just wanted to show you that you have the option to create your own environment. So this is it on the AWS Elastic Beanstalk. We covered the basic concepts of Elastic Beanstalk. We covered the concepts on web server environment and the worker environment. And we saw how to deploy our application through the AWS Management Console. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. I'll cover further more tutorials in the upcoming videos. Thank you.